Hi everyone, this is a review of Sizzlin' Scents Wax Melts. This is my second review. Uh, I've got 30 cents here. I did my first review in 2018. Uh, Sizzlin' Scents is a small candle and wax melt business in Indiana. She can be found on Etsy at etsy.com slash shop slash Sizzlin' Scents. It's not sizzling, not with a G. It's Sizzlin', S-I-Z-Z-L-I-N-S-C-E-N-T-S. And on Facebook, I'll include the Etsy website link under this video and on the text version of this review at waxmeltreviews.com. The text version of this review will also include a link to the first review I did for Sizzle and Scents in 2018. Sizzle and Scents candy, uh, candles and wax melts are made of a paraffin soy blend, parasoy. And although she offered many different shapes in the past, I believe the main format now is clamshells, which I'm actually happy about because for me, I think they're just the best format. And um, her, she also has new labels on her clamshells on her website, which um, are really very, very nice, very professional. So uh, check those out. And she does write, at least on these, the ones that I reviewed, she wrote the uh, the poor the poor date for each of these scents, which I thought was really helpful. So I enjoyed these wax melts, and Chris Anderson, the owner, as always, was friendly, helpful, and professional. So I'm going to try to run through these <coughs> as quickly as possible because we've got 30 cents, and it's getting late. So I will start with Amazon Mist. I'm not going to open these because obviously you can see the wax through here. And then you're going to see some cat hair, but um, I have a lot of cats, so I can't help that. If you've never seen my reviews before, I don't look at the scent notes until after I've done the review because I don't want to be swayed by what I think it should smell like. So the notes for Amazon Mist are the moist fragrance of fresh dew alive with hints of flower gardens, exotic herbs, green grass, raindrops, and light earthy tones. This is an herbal scent with apple or pear and a fresh note and a hint of black pepper. It smells just kind of like a fresh, slightly fruity herbal shampoo, but it doesn't have any bergamot or cologne or body wash type, type notes. I like the scent. The throw was faint, like a two out of five. It would do well in a very, very tiny room. I can only smell it from a few yards away. Next we have Angel Heart. And come on, there we go. The notes are an intense romantic fragrance with top notes of mandarin, apricot, orange, and <laughs> I'm going to come back to this note, T-A-G-E-T-S. I'll come back to that. It's warm and inviting undertones are comprised of balsam, rum, rose, violet, jasmine, elang, elang, and iris. The sexy and sensual bass notes are a heady blend of sandalwood, blackcurrant, wild pears, Vanilla, musk, and vetiver. There's a lot of notes there. So that note, that T-A-G-E-T-E-S, I have no idea how to pronounce that. I went online and there were like a ton of different ways to pronounce it. So it could be Tagetes, it could be Tajits, Tajites, Tagetes, or Tagets. So I have no idea, but Tagets, Tagetes, whatever, it's marigold. They should have just said marigold because that's what Tagatees is. Anyway, there's a lot of notes going on in this scent. I can't figure out exactly what I'm smelling. Uh, I smelled a fruity floral, a hint of wood, maybe a hint of citrus, a hint of vanilla, possibly a smidgen of pine way in the background, a teensy bit of bitterness. It's sweet but not perfumey at all, and it's not even overly sweet. I like it. Looking at the notes, I knew there would be a lot of notes. And like I said, Tagatees is marigold and marigold flowers are bitter. So that's the little bit of hint of bitterness in there. And the throw is mild, would do well in a very small to a small room, like a 2.5 out of 5. I know um, the first couple of scents here are weak throwers, but, you know, just keep watching. There is uh, There's some really good throwers in here, too. Next, we have banana palm leaf. Notes are tropical fusion nuances of pineapple leaves, dragon apple, banana puree, and palm wood. On cold sniff, this smells like pineapple, banana, and a hint of coconut. I also think there's a hint of vanilla and maybe a smidgen of a perfumey note. 
I don't smell palm per se, which is a nutty coconut scent with a hint of light wood, and this scent does not have any nutty or woody, woodsy notes. I actually really like it. When melted, the banana note does dissipate, and I smell more of the pineapple and the coconut, and the, th uh, the throw is medium, like a three out of five would do well in a small to medium-sized room. Next is Berry Bliss. Notes are a mouth-watering berry fragrance with top notes of red berry, mid notes of sheer floral on a dry base of sweet musk. This is an absolutely fantastic berry scent that smells like a super sweet berry and vanilla candy, but with a pink sugar, sponge sugar, cotton candy type note. I love this scent. The throw is medium, like a three out of five would do well in a small to medium sized room. Next is Black Cherry Merlot with cat hair. Wow, lots of cat hair. Uh, notes are a deep, dark, succulent black cherry combined with Merlot, a sweet, fruit, and a sweet, fruity, sophisticated plums, strawberries, and pears float above a light layer of fresh green leaf, gardenia, and neroli. Middle notes are anchored with a soft and delicate musk. This is a rich, sweet scent that smells like black cherry and a bit of grape, a little bit like punch, but not as punchy. Not punchy enough because I also detect a hint of sweet vanilla and or a perfumey note. It's very, very sweet and doesn't smell like Merlot at all, but that's perfectly okay because it's a great scent. I love it. Looking at the notes, there's the musk and the gardenia and the neroli, neither of which I detect per se, but I guess that makes this scent extra sweet. Plums, I do get that. No pears or strawberry, though, and I'm surprised I don't see grape. This one is a bold thrower. Five out of five took over the entire house, so this one is an absolute keeper. Black Cherry Merlot. Great scent. Next is Blackberry Lemonade. Notes are sun-ripened blackberry, plum, fresh strawberry, and ripe banana with middle notes of tart lemon, red currant, and Bartlett pear on a dry base of caramelized sugar, raspberry jam, and soft musk. This is a very nice combination of blackberries and lemon. Although rich and sweet, this is slightly sour and more tart than most similar scents. I really like it. Looking at the notes, there's the tart lemon. I don't smell banana or musk at all, and the throw is medium, like a three out of five would do well in a small to medium-sized room. Next is blue pixie dust. Um, there we go. Notes are... Sweet, sugary, raspberry, and tart blackberry highlight the mouth-watering lemon, orange, and sour green apple that make this scent unique, inspired by Jolly Rancher blue raspberry candy with a touch of bubblegum. This smells like fake, in a good way, blueberry with a candy note and a little bit of a pink sugar note, which is like raspberry and lemon with sponge sugar. It smells a lot like the Berry Bliss scent, but that scent is richer and more fruity with the sweet vanilla note. This scent is a bit less fruity, no vanilla, and a hint of a sour fruit candy note. Looking at the notes, they're spot on, although I don't actually detect the lemon, orange, and apple notes, but I guess that maybe is what uh, what's helping with the sourness. I actually really like this one, and the throw is very strong. Four out of five would do well in a large room, and maybe outside the room, so this one is actually a great scent too. Next is bourbon and brown sugar. Notes are buttery caramel, dark oud wood, and aged bourbon whiskey. Hints of soft vanilla and velvety brown sugar emerge from the woody and musky base. This smells like burnt sugar, caramel, and a very slightly bacony, smoky note. I've smelled other scents like this, and this is the combination that's supposed to smell like bourbon, but it doesn't at all. It's actually quite nice, though, and sweeter than most scents like this, with an additional maple note and maybe a hint of sweet tobacco. Looking at the notes, I don't detect any woodsy or musk or perfumey notes, and the throw is very strong, four out of five, so great scent. Next is Caribbean Day Spa. Notes are sparkling sea air and ozone fused with nuances of mugwe, lilac, spicy saffron, fennel, moss, and sandalwood. Relax and renew with this fresh, clean scent. This is a very soapy scent with possibly a smidgen of fruit, maybe grapefruit, and coconut way in the background, but it's mostly just like a bar of soap, a combination of plain ivory soap with fresh, crisp, clean soap, like 90% of that soapy note and 10% of the other notes. 
which is perfectly okay. It smells fantastic. It's not overly sweet at all. It would be perfect for a bathroom and it's different from other scents that sound similar. The throw is strong, like a 3.5 out of five. So great scent, like I said, especially for a bathroom. Cedar, sage, and blackberry. Notes are a beautiful, calming, herbaceous blend of fresh sage, woody cedar, and sweet, dark blackberry. This smells like uh, cranberry with a bit of sage, a hint of wood, and maybe a smidgen of a perfumey note way in the background. It's sweet, but also kind of tart. I like it. Throw is medium, like a three out of five, would do well in a small to a medium sized room. Next is Cleopatra. Notes are ripe red currant with notes of Egyptian musk. On cold sniff, this smells like red currant with berry and lemon notes, as well as a musky perfume note, but when melted, it smells like a nice strawberry vanilla scent with just a hint of perfume, although it's not a pink sugar scent at all. It's actually quite nice. The throw is uh, mild, like a 2.5 out of 5, would do well in a very small to a small room. Next is cranberry salsa. Notes are crushed juicy cranberries mixed with grapes, lemon, pink grapefruit, strawberries, and pomegranate with nuances of apple blossoms and heliotrope. This scent is more complex than a cranberry sauce or a cranberry marmalade. This smells a little bit like the Berry Bliss scent, but not nearly as sweet and rich and with no vanilla notes. It's a very sweet scent of cranberry and maybe pomegranate with a tiny bit of a pink sugar vibe, but the tartness of the cranberry tempers some of that sweetness. The tartness is subtle though. I, I really like this one. The throw is medium, like a three out of five would do well in a small to medium sized room. Next is Dream Catcher. Notes are, a sultry oriental floral type opens with a subtle berry, muscadine, and apricot nuance and is followed by a floral explosion of heliotrope, jasmine, carnation, geranium, elang, rose, and black orchid and finishes with rich burnt cedar, dark patchouli, creamy sandalwood, and vanilla musk. A one-of-a-kind designer perfume type fragrance. This is a super sweet, rich, warm, ambery, musky oriental perfume scent. It has a teensy bit of an incense note and maybe a smidgen of vanilla. It's very nice. I love these types of scents. And the throw is medium, like a three out of five, would do well in a small to medium sized room. Next is eucalyptus and thyme with cat fur. Uh, notes are an awesome eucalyptus scent with a hint of thyme added for balance and smoothness. This is a fantastic scent of eucalyptus and pine, like Vicks Vapor Rub mixed with pine. I do smell the thyme too. Well, even though it's definitely eucalyptus, it does not have any nasal clearing effects that eucalyptus scents usually do. So it's probably not going to help you if you have a cold, but it does smell great. And the throw is strong, like a 3.5 out of 5. Would do well in a medium to a large room. Another great scent. Uh, French vanilla cappuccino. Notes are... Roasted coffee combined with hints of California lemon, that's a weird combination, hints of California lemon and a touch of berries, yeah, coffee and lemon doesn't sound good together, California lemon and a touch of berries in a pool of rich melted butter mixed with sugared vanilla, tonka beans, and a pile of toasted marshmallows. I smell coffee, sweet vanilla, and maybe a hint of nuts, but it also has like a smidgen of a leather or vinyl note, not enough to be annoying, and I don't smell it in the room. Looking at the notes, coffee and lemon is an odd combination, although I don't actually smell lemon at all. But maybe somehow in that combination, I get like that teensy bit of that vinyl or leather, but it's barely noticeable. In fact, I shouldn't even mention it because I don't think anyone else is going to notice it. Throw on this one is faint, like a two out of five would do well in maybe a tiny to a very small room. I could only smell from a few yards away. Next is fruit salad. Notes are... The top is a fruity citrus with strawberries, grapefruit, and orange tangerine. The heart blends plums, black currant, and green apple and cherry. The dry is a fresh white violet and raspberry vanilla with soft sandalwood, a mouth-watering array of candied citrus fruits of grapefruit, orange, lemon, and lime coated with sweet sugar crystals. Whew, that's a lot of notes. This is a very sweet fruit punch scent that's mostly orange, then cherry, then strawberry, and maybe a hint of lime way in the background. It's like 55% orange, 35% cherry, and 10% other fruits. It's not a fruity cereal type scent at all. I love this scent. Throw is strong, like a 3.5 out of 5. Great scent. Next is golden opium. Notes of, oh, notes are, notes of citron, 
rich patchouli, soft jasmine, cinnamon spice, and bright carnation are fused with nuances of gold, amber musk, clove bud, myrrh, and evergreen forest. This is a lovely, warm, ambery perfume patchouli scent with a little bit of an oriental spice note. It's a fantastic scent. Looking at the notes, I don't detect any evergreen notes at all, but maybe a smidgen of cinnamon in the background. This is completely different from the dream catcher scent, which has similar, similar notes. This scent has much more patchouli, and that scent is primarily the oriental perfume. And the throw on this one is faint. A two out of five would be... I can only smell it a few yards away. It would do well in a tiny to a very small room. Next is Havana Nights. Notes are hints of fruity wine and spicy cinnamon, warm cloves, aromatic incense, and earthy patchouli. The spicy and somewhat sweet fragrance. You will be transported to a magical evening with that special someone. This smells like cloves with a little bit of cinnamon and a hint of tobacco. It's sweet, warm, and kind of yummy. And when melted, it reminds me of A1 steak sauce in a good way, but sweeter. And the scent lasted all day. Looking at the notes, no tobacco, but maybe that's the patchouli. And I don't detect wine or any fruit at all. This one is a keeper. It smells fantastic. And the throw is bold. Five out of five took over the entire house and again the scent lasted all day so Havana Nights is absolutely a keeper for me. Next is Midnight Moon. Notes are a fresh woodsy blend of crisp pine needles and white fir. Warm notes of clove on a bed of patchouli, oak, and sugar pine combined with a soft floral blend of bergamot, mimosa, jasmine, violet, mugwe, elang, soft woods, and musk. This may be one of the weirdest scents I've ever smelled, and I'm not sure if I love it, but I can't stop smelling it. I can't figure out the notes, and that's what makes it interesting. The base is very sweet and floral, like violet or maybe gardenia, but I don't really smell that much sweetness when it's melting. But it's also, I want to say smoky, but it's not actually smoky, maybe more like ashy. Kind of like a, like cigarette ashes, which sounds bad, but not it's not exactly that either. I also get black pepper and soapiness and maybe a hint of incense like patchouli. I'm just really confused about these notes, but I, I love the scent. It's, it's so weird, but I really love it. Looking at the notes, I don't smell pine, although the pine and cloves could be part of that ashy note. I don't know, but... The throw is bold. Five out of five took over the entire house. So even though it's weird, I love it. And it, it it's a bold thrower, so it's a keeper for me. Next is Midnight Pomegranate. Notes are juicy red pomegranate with notes of anise, patchouli, blackberry, musk, tube, dewberry, iris, vanilla, sandalwood, tobacco flower, and cassis. This is a nice, rich, fruity scent that smells like blackberry, cranberry, and maybe a hint of apple. I'm not sure what a pomegranate actually smells like, but it's kind of, I, I think it, yeah, actually, I think it does smell a bit like pomegranate with maybe a barely detectable smidgen of perfuminess. Uh, the throw on this one was strong, like a 3.5 out of 5. I noticed that the, uh, the fruity scents tend to throw really well, much better than the non-fruity scents. Uh, we have Mountain Breeze. The notes are the sweet magical fragrance of Lily of the Valley with its tiny white bell-shaped hanging flowers blended with the fresh essence of pure Australian eucalyptus oil working in synergy with American spearmint. On cold sniff, this has an odd chemical note that thankfully dissipates when melted. On cold sniff, it smells like a sweet floral mixed with pine and a smidgen of spirit that makes it smell a tiny bit like sensational zen, but it also has a little bit of a fresh shower gel note. Melted, it's just a nice fresh air type scent with a bit of a body wash note, and I don't notice the pine or the mint notes. It's a base, it's kind of basic, but it's nice, and the throw is strong, 3.5 out of 5. Next is Nutty Bread. The notes are Tender chestnuts roasting on an open fire, reminiscent of a cozy winter night at the cabin in the country, combined with the savory aroma of buttery baked bread fresh from the oven. 
This really does smell like bread. Toast specifically has a bit of a burnt note, but not in a bad way as it makes it smell more authentic. On cold sniff, it has just a tiny bit of, a little bit of sweetness that gives it a little bit of a sweet bread note, but it's not a cake or bakery scent at all. But melted, the sweetness dissipates and it's more of a rich, salty, slightly buttery toast scent. I don't smell any nutty notes though. Looking at the notes, I don't smell chestnuts per se, but they're salty and rich, which might be where the salty richness is coming from. I love the scent and the throw is bold. Five out of five. Took over the entire house. So Nutty Bread is definitely a winner for me. Next is Orchid Rain. Notes are delicate orchid petals dripping with dew drops and fresh rain. Upscale and sophisticated, this beautiful floral and watery ozone fusion has a touch of powder to round out the tones. This is a soft, sweet, watery, mostly laundry perfumey scent. It's very, very sweet, much more so than a typical laundry scent since there's a lot more going on. It's like 60% laundry and 40% of all the other notes. The floral is more like a rose than orchid, but with some other florals like possibly magnolia, but without the lemon note. Um, with a baby powder note and a bit of soapiness. It's a perfect scent for the bathroom or bedroom or baby's room. And I love this one. And the throw is strong. 3.5 out of 5. This is a keeper for me. I love my sweet perfumey scents. Uh, next we have Pillow Talk. Notes are a sexy and enchanting musky woody scent with a hint of mold fruit. Not mold fruit. Mold. M-U-L-L-E-D. Fruit. Citrus peel and spice berry in the top note. A green berry and vetiver middle and a musky, creamy, patchouli, sandalwood, and myrrh-based note. This is a lovely, warm, ambery, or cashmere, musky scent with maybe a smidgen of vanilla. On cold sniff, I think I detect a smidgen of fruit, but I don't smell that one melted. The throw is mild, like a 2.5 out of 5, would do well in a very small to a small room. Next is Pink Melon. Notes are, a sweet, tangy scent you can freshen up your home and your life. This is, a, this is simply a ripe, juicy honeydew melon. Honeydew lights up your life with its refreshing and invigorating fragrance combined with notes of sparkling pear, peach nectar, and wild berries with mid notes of water lily, apple blossom, tiara flower, and jasmine on a base of vanilla orchid, sandalwood, coconut milk, and chiffon musk. I thought by the scent name Pink Melon, I thought it was like a combination of, of pink sugar and like watermelon, which actually would have been really awesome. I would have loved that. But this is actually very nice too. It's a fruity floral with pear, honeydew, and a hint of peach and a little bit of sweet floral like gardenia or jasmine. Melted. I smell mostly the pear and honeydew, which ends up smelling kind of like cantaloupe, but a bit, a little sweeter. It's actually very nice and the throw is strong, like a 3.5 out of 5. Next is salted caramel coffee. Uh, notes are fresh brewed coffee with a salted caramel, grated almond, and a trace of orange. Sweeten the buttery accord that opens this decadent treat. Uh, that's just so grammatically incorrect, but that's okay. Um, maple sugar is spiced with cinnamon and layered with creamed vanilla to complete the caramel sensation. This is a yummy salted caramel scent with a coffee note, a bit of chocolate, and maybe a smidgen of musk. Maybe 60% caramel, 25% coffee, 10% chocolate, and 5% maple. I'm sorry, maybe a smidgen of maple. No musk. There's no musk in there. It's not a perfumey scent. Uh, it's very nice. Looking at the notes, I think I do detect a smidgen of almond way in the background, but no orange, and I don't smell cinnamon at all. And the throw is like a 4 out of 5. Very strong. So, very nice scent. Oh, my allergies are driving me crazy. And talking isn't really helping too much. Next, we have Serene Waters. Notes are a shimmering blue lake stretching as far as the eye can see inspires a sparkling luminous scent. Juicy lime is spiked with wild mint and swirled with ocean lilies, musk, palm trees, and sea moss. A distinctively unique scent. This is a fresh but slightly bitter scent and only a little bit sweet. It has an oceany water note and garden mint with a little bit of a nasal clearing effect. Although I don't smell mint in the room, only up close. Looking at the notes, I don't detect lime or any citrus or fruity notes at all. And the throw is very strong, four out of five. Next is Sultry Nights. Notes are, this is a richly aromatic blend of peppercorns, juniper berries, clary sage, ylang ylang, elamai. 
I don't know what that is, citrus bergamot, clove buds, and nutmeg. This is an incredible, sweet, rich, opulent, perfumey scent of patchouli, cloves, maybe a hint of cinnamon, and even a smidgen of smokiness. For some reason, I'm associating this scent with deep-toned jewels. After a few hours, it starts to take on a little bit of an aged, old-fashioned perfume note, but in a really good way. Looking at the notes, I'm surprised I don't see some type of floral because it's very sweet and kind of perfumey, and I'm surprised I don't see patchouli. I don't detect any citrus or bergamot. Um, bergamot gives sense a cologne note, but maybe that's the perfuminess of this scent. Peppercorns are basically black pepper, and I don't get that either, although it could be somewhere in the background. I adore this scent, Sultry Nights. It lasted the entire day, at least 12 hours, probably would, would have gone longer if I hadn't turned off the warmer for the evening, and the throw is bold. Five out of five took over the entire room. Next is Whispering Willow. Notes are, this is a green tea and willow with notes of leafy green tea and wood, hints of fresh ozone air, melon, bergamot, coriander, Night blooming jasmine, watercress, earthen moss, peppergrass, white willow, pink cyclamen, cedar amber, sacred datura, and white musk. They don't have nearly enough notes in this kitty. What are you doing? My cat's playing here. Um, this is a pleasant scent that smells like green grit. Really, kitten? What are you doing? Come on, get out of that box. A pleasant scent that smells like green grass, a hint of floral, a soapy note, and a hint of slightly lemony, slightly savory herb. It's sweet, but not overly sweet. Looking at the notes, I don't smell tea per se, but that might be the slightly lemony herbal note. And the throw on this one is mild. Like a 2.5 out of 5 would do well in a very small to a small room. And last we have white sage and lavender. Notes are... Bright and clean scent of white... Come on, get out of there, kitten. Bright and clean scent of white sage combined with the dreamy scent of lavender. This smells like a bubble bath. It's a combination of lavender, which is very subtle, musk and baby powder with a really soapy note. But it's not really perfumey. <laughs> perfumey. Come on, kittens. You're really messing me up here. It's not really perfumey or even overly sweet. When melting, I do smell a little bit more of the lavender, but still smells more like soapy lavender scented bubble bath. I adore this scent and the throw is strong. 3.5 out of 5. This is another keeper. Oh my gosh, I'm going to finish in under 30 minutes. That I think that's so awesome. Okay, so if you want to read a text version of this review, just go to waxmeltreviews.com. And I hope that you've enjoyed this review. And again, you can find the link to the website, the Sizzlin' Sense website, underneath this video and on the um, text version of this review at waxmeltreviews.com. And the website is etsy.com slash shop slash Sizzlin' Sense, all one word, S-I-Z-Z-L-I-N-S-C-E-N-T-S. <sighs> Have a good evening.